So I pulled a couple of clips from Kirsten Gillibrand's town hall on CNN because I think that she is someone to look out for. And I know that she isn't necessarily polling too well just yet, but I think that what she demonstrated over the course of this town hall is that she is incredibly slick. I think she's extremely charismatic and she reminds me of Hillary Clinton if Hillary Clinton was more strategically savvy and didn't piss people off every single time she opened her mouth by saying something smug or elitist. Because what Kirsten Gillibrand does is she says something that makes progressives feel satisfied with her answer, but she's saying this all while remaining firmly in the camp of corporate America. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. So recently, a pharmaceutical executive named Sally Sussman hosted a fundraiser for Kirsten Gillibrand. So in my view, that's something that I deem disqualifying. After you've done a fundraiser, a private fundraiser, a multi-thousand dollar fundraiser with a big pharma executive, what little interest I already had in you, it vanishes. And I think she knows that that pissed off a lot of people. So she was asked about this, surprisingly, to CNN's credit, at her town hall. And the answer that she gave was really, really interesting to me because even if she still defends her decision to have a fundraiser, the policy solution that she proposes is so good that I think that she may actually be able to distract people from the fact that she did something that was overtly corrupt in the first place. I know that you speak very passionately about supporting Medicare for all, but you also have a long history of taking uh, campaign and lobbying money from pharmaceutical companies, um, a lot of whom manufacture drugs at prices that I could not afford without insurance. Um, are you committed to questioning your contradiction and supporting Medicare for all while remaining close to drug companies? Uh, how exactly do you plan to reform these practices? And can we expect to see the change reflected in your Senate votes and if you're president? Well, um, I, my voting record, I stand up to the drug companies. I've sponsored legislation to stand up to the drug companies. And I'm not beholden to donors. It's why I'm in favor of publicly funded elections. It's also why I don't take corporate PAC money. It's why I don't take federal lobbyist money. And it's why I don't want to have an individual super PAC. I believe if you want to restore this democracy into your hands, you're going to have to get money out of politics. You're actually going to have to fight for publicly funded elections. Uh, so I'm not beholden to any industries, and my voting record proves it. So given the optics of being too cozy with pharmaceuticals and the point that Scout was making, why did you allow a Pfizer vice president to host a fundraiser Because she's recently? my friend, and I've known her for lots of years, and she supports my positions on LGBTQ equality. Uh, and she supports my positions on women's rights and women's empowerment. So, you know, individuals will support you for all sorts of reasons. And you don't want to undermine an individual's right to participate. But it's one of the reasons, because you made that assumption, it's one of the reasons why we need to get money out of politics. Because it corrodes people's belief that our democracy is strong. So you want publicly funded elections. It's the quickest and best way to restore people's faith mm. in our democracy. That, to me, was just a masterful dodge. It was art. It really was a form of art because what she does to get you to forget about the fact that she just did a fundraiser with a pharmaceutical executive whose company rips people off and who just gave their CEO a 61% pay raise, she wants you to forget about that and she invokes a really bold progressive policy. She says that's why I support publicly financing elections, all of them. And the only other person who really talks about this is Bernie Sanders. And she said it unequivocally. She said, I support publicly financed elections, full stop. She didn't add in the caveat that I want to get money, dark money out of politics. She just said, I want to get money, period, out of politics. And I think that that is absolutely um, a great way to get people to forget about the fact that you're not serious about wanting to get corruption out of politics because, again, you just attended a fundraiser with a pharma executive. So why should we believe you? Because if she's willing to cozy up to big pharma executives like Sally Sussman, who's a multimillionaire and a campaign bundler, then obviously, if she's friends with these types of people, these powerful individuals, obviously, she's going to be susceptible to their influence. So if she does one day become president and proposes legislation to publicly finance all elections and get money out of politics, don't you think that since she's friends with them and they have a vested interest in fighting that, that they have at least some influence over her and could potentially get her to reverse course? Of course. So what we need is 
less talk and more action because she's not practicing what she's preaching. She's saying exactly what she needs to be saying when it comes to getting money out of politics, but simultaneously she's participating in the corruption and the process where money does corrupt our political system. If you're doing private fundraisers with big pharma executives, that's part of the problem. So you can't identify the problem and still participate. You have to practice what you preach. She's not doing that, but she's slick because she's saying what you want to hear. And she's hoping that saying the right thing will be a big enough distraction from the fact that she's not walking the walk. I think it's really brilliant. It's it's a great way to dodge, you know, this issue. It's it's a great way to kind of distract you from the core issue that I think plagues her overall campaign. But it's sleazy. It's absolutely sleazy. Now, on the note um, of healthcare and big pharma, she was asked about whether or not she would support the abolition of private insurance companies. Now, the person kind of worded this in a way that may be misleading because I don't think Bernie Sanders is explicitly saying that we ban private health insurance companies. He's just saying we should construct a Medicare for All plan that's so good that they would go out of business because nobody would need private insurance. We fill all the gaps with our Medicare for All system that makes those private health companies um, unnecessary and hopefully non-existent. So, you know, besides the framing, which I think is a little bit problematic, here's what she says overall, and what she says is very unclear with regard to her stance on Medicare for All. Hi, Senator Gillibrand. Yep. Uh, my name's Kamran. I have two heart conditions and a spine condition oh. that have required me to get life-altering surgeries throughout my childhood. And if my family wasn't able to afford those surgeries, if my family couldn't pay for a pacemaker and two steel mm. rods in my back, yeah. uh, I wouldn't be alive today. So mm. would you abolish the private insurance industry that has taken advantage of people like me? Well, first of all, thank you for being so brave. And thank you for sharing your story with all of us. It's bravery of yours that inspires me to work harder every day to take on the insurance companies to make sure health care is a right and not a privilege. Um, that's why I am for Medicare for all, and I believe that the best way to get there is let people buy in, and that was how we get to single payer over a very short transition period. Um, I think part of the corruption and greed in Washington is the insurance industry as the middleman for health care, because they don't necessarily care about which surgeries you need or which medicine you need or how many days in the hospitals you need. Ultimately, they're for profit companies, and they have to care about their bottom line and their shareholders. And I think that's the misalignment in healthcare today. I don't think you can actually get to universal coverage unless you have a not-for-profit public option um, that is focused solely on human health. Would, would you be able to say, though, that a, an option that you support would be able to get him everything that he needs without his family paying a dollar extra, with no wait time and no, okay, well, pacemakers aren't included, or something like well, that? Well, you should ask anyone in America who has access to Medicare. It covers the things you need. It certainly covers the medications. It co covers the surgeries, the hospital stays, everything you need. Um, and I think if people bought in at a price they could afford, like 4% of income, that would work. And if you matched it with your employer and you had a choice over the way we wrote Senator mm -hmm. Sanders' bill, um, I got to write the transition piece or work on that piece. We had a buy in over four years. I think most Americans, if you do your number crunching in your own head, 4% of your income, yeah, it's probably less than you're paying now. And people will choose it. I would choose it in a New York minute. Uh, and I think if you got to, <laughs> if you got to Medicare uh, for all, what you're going to do is have economies of scale, which will bend the cost curve. You'll have all Americans have access to preventive care, which bends the cost curve. Um, and then you need to actually get some costs out by ending fee-for-service, uh, making sure our doctors can work on a continuum of care model like they have at the Mayo Clinic, right? Uh, and, and make sure that you get the price of um, pharmaceuticals down. That means taking on the drug companies. So uh, I do want to talk to you about that because, because we have a question about pharmaceutical and prices. Just the Medicare yeah. today, mm -hmm. back to greed and corruption, the reason why Medicare patients don't have the lowest cost for drugs is because under George W. Bush, they negotiated in the dead of night to make sure that drug manufacturers would never have to negotiate in bulk with Medicare. So first of all, it's important to note that she did not answer his question. She did not unequivocally say that I'd support getting rid of the private health insurance companies. We're not expecting her to say we're going to pass a law making them illegal. We're just saying that you're going to 
we want you to commit to a bill that would make them unnecessary and therefore go out of business because your Medicare for All plan is so strong. She didn't answer the core question. Now, additionally, if you'll notice, she talked about a Medicare buy-in as a way to get to Medicare for All, but the problem is that you don't need to establish that unnecessary step in between our for-profit system and Medicare for All. You can just go directly from our current system to Medicare for All. But I don't know if she's saying that a Medicare buy-in would just be established once we pass Medicare for All and simply serve as a transitionary necessity, um, you know, once we pass Medicare for All and until we get to there. I think that it feels anyway like she's being intentionally unclear because I think she's trying to leave herself room for plausible deniability. So if she's ever elected and she doesn't do Medicare for All and she gives us a public option, then... um. She could say, I never fully committed to Medicare for All. I supported Bernie's bill. I co-sponsored it. But at the same time, I also co-sponsored other half measures. I said I supported a public option. So I didn't lie. It's not it's not a lie, technically. I'm not going back on my campaign promise. I'm doing what I said I was going to do. It seems like that's the case. But also, she's leaving room for interpretation that she actually does support Medicare for all and she only supports Medicare buy-in as a means of establishing that as a necessity during the transition process. But when you hear someone like Pete Buttigieg talk about Medicare for everyone who wants it, he just says, you know, or he implies certainly that Medicare for all is more of a long-term ideal, but now we should just do a Medicare buy-in. Now, I don't know if she's saying that, so she needs to be clear, but I think that this room for interpretation is really, it's its a tactic, right? She's trying to be purposefully vague to give herself enough room to make you think she supports Medicare for all, but also allow her to weasel out of it if she doesn't pass it, if she's elected. And again, because of her relationship with pharmaceutical executives like Sally Sussman, my default position with respect to Kirsten Gillibrand is always to be overly skeptical of every single thing that she says because if you're friends with someone who has a vested interest in maintaining the for-profit status quo that we currently have i can't trust you i have to be skeptical of you because i'd be a moron and i'd be really naive to not be skeptical of what you're saying so overall she is someone who is clearly politically astute she is strategically savvy Perhaps more so than a lot of her colleagues, more so than Beto O'Rourke, certainly more so than Pete Buttigieg. Um, but she's one to watch because she talks in a way that allows her to firmly keep her feet rooted in two different camps. The establishment corporate wing of the party and the progressive wing. And she'll adopt really bold policy proposals while simultaneously, probably behind closed doors, promising her donors something else. So I don't trust her one bit. And if you're going to do fundraisers, then I don't think it's irrational or unreasonable for us to question your loyalty and if you're serious about Medicare for all. Because we've been fucked over how many times now? Barack Obama said he supports a public option. He didn't even push for it. So we've been screwed over. In the post-Obama era of Democratic Party politics, we're not going to interpret anything a politician says charitably. We're going to expect you by default to betray us, and it's your job to prove to us that that's not the case. And in my opinion, she hasn't done that. Um, it's clear she is another bullshitter, and I don't trust her. Sorry. Um, Stop doing fundraisers with big pharma executives. I don't care how lovely a person Sally Sussman may be, personally. I don't care that she um, supports LGBTQ rights. I mean, how how progressive to support LGBTQ rights in 2019. She's still a big pharma executive who's fucking over Americans, ripping people off. That doesn't make you a good person. Overall, you can have these good qualities about you and be supportive of equality and a more equitable society, but if you're still ripping off Americans and profiting off of pain, you're not a good person. And to be friends with them, to, to want to be friends with a shitty person like that, um, I, I just, I'm sorry, I can't trust you. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.